Sue Donahue, the president of the Prospect Park Alliance, the nonprofit that sustains this park in partnership with the city of New York. On behalf of the Alliance and its board of directors and our board chair, Iris Weinschild, I'm thrilled to welcome you all to Prospect Park this morning. I want to thank Mayor Bill de Blasio, First Lady Shirlane McRae, Deputy Mayor Alicia Glenn for selecting Prospect Park, which we like to call Brooklyn's backyard for the site of this important honor. The entrance that serves as our setting this morning is going to undergo a significant $6.7 million restoration through the support of Mayor de Blasio. And this monument will serve as a critical focal point, and we thank you. Now, to officially commence the start of this important ceremony, I would like to introduce someone who sang at Carnegie Hall, sang with John Legend and Common. I'd like to introduce Scheherazade Holman, who will sing A Change Is Gonna Come. Scheherazade. I was born by the river in a little tent, oh, just like that river I've been running ever since. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die. Cause I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. See, I go to the movies and I go downtown. But somebody keep telling me, don't, don't hang around. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. When I thought uh, I wasn't gonna last long, but but now I think uh, I'm able to carry on. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh yes, it will. Hey, hey. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> Long time coming. And here we are. Thank you so much, Shahrazad, for that beautiful, beautiful song. And so appropriate for this day, which we have waited for, for a long, long time. And I want to thank you, Sue, for hosting us today. What a great day to celebrate women. What a great day to celebrate us. Right? Earlier this year, we set out to correct a glaring inequity in our public spaces. In a city filled with literally hundreds of statues and spaces memorializing men of European descent, there are only a handful of women honored. That's why we launched She Built New York City, She Built NYC, a commitment to honor the contributions of women in our city's public spaces. Today, we take the first big step toward fulfilling our commitment with the commission of a brand new statue to grace this entrance to Prospect Park. New Yorkers from all over the city sent in their nominations, and I am thrilled to announce that New York City's newest monument will honor a personal heroine of mine and so many others. 
Not only is she my Bajan sister, she is also one of Brooklyn's favorite daughters and a true trailblazer in American politics. I won't keep you in suspense any longer. <laughs> I'll simply borrow the words that used to blare from her car as she rode through her congressional district just a few blocks from here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Fighting Shirley Chisholm coming through. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Beginning next year, New Yorkers and visitors walking into Prospect Park will be greeted by the powerful figure of Shirley Chisholm, a black woman who carved a path for herself in public life when women, especially women of color, were expected to sit down and be quiet. And what better day to announce it than her birthday? Yeah. That's right. Shirley would have been 94 today. Shirley did not shy away from her power. She embraced it. She fought for it. If they don't give you a seat at the table, she said, bring a folding chair. Shirley made room for herself at the decision-making table, first in Albany, then in Washington, as the first ever African-American woman elected to Congress. And then again, as the first black candidate seeking a major party presidential nomination. As she found political success, she never lost sight of her values, of her working class upbringing in Barbados and Bed-Stuy and her distinguished career as an early childhood educator. She remained forever unbought and unbossed. She fought for living wages and unemployment insurance for domestic workers, a stronger safety net for families, funding for daycares, and a college financial aid program for poor young people that many CUNY students still benefit from today. She helped create Title IX, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and the Congressional Black Caucus. Any one, any one of these achievements would be enough to earn a white man a permanent place on a stone pedestal. Am I right? That's right. But women, women of color especially, are rarely given the credit they deserve. Here in the city Shirley loved, we are working to change that. A statue to commemorate the great Shirley Chisholm is long overdue, but it is also coming during a year when thousands of women from different backgrounds embraced their power and ran for office. Beginning in January, more than 120 women will represent their districts in the House of Representatives. That's more women than ever, and thanks to Shirley, they won't need a folding chair. I know Shirley would have been proud, but she would also keep on fighting. And I'm so happy to know that young people in our city will view Shirley's statue one day soon and learn more about this revolutionary woman's legacy. And when they look to the halls of power in Washington and across the country, they will see that her legacy lives on. One day they may be part of it themselves. And that's what today is all about. I am honored to be joined by so many leaders who carry on Shirley's legacy every day, including our next speaker, who knew Shirley as a mentor and as a friend. She is one of the nation's top political strategists and thinkers and a trailblazer herself. Please welcome Donna Brazil. Thank you, Boo. Good morning, Brooklyn. Good morning. Good morning, New York. Good morning. Uh, what a great honor it is to be here with all of you today to pay tribute to a remarkable woman. As a young Hill staffer back in 1981, I got a chance to meet my hero. I had just come up from the great state of Louisiana and I told my Congressman Gillis Long, I said, I want to meet that black woman who is from New York City, the black woman who ran for the presidency of the United States because one day I want to run a presidential campaign. And no sooner did I said a black woman, here she came out of the room and she said, who are you referring to? And I said, <laughs> you. I got to know Mrs. C. I got to work with her. 
I got to understand that she was a fighter for change, that she believed in this great country, that she wanted to lift up children. She wanted to make this a better place for everyone. Mrs. C said that she would be a catalyst for change and that we will remember her because we will continue the legacy of opening doors for others. I know Mrs. C today, especially today on her birthday, a day that she wanted to simply gossip about what was going on, what was in the news, Donna, what is happening? And so let me just tell you what I would have told her this morning. I would have said, Miss C, you wouldn't believe it, but Maxine Waters is gonna chair the Financial Services Committee. And Miss C, you wouldn't believe that Facebook and Google and all those other social media networks, they'll have to appear before Eddie Bernice Johnson's Committee, Science and Technology. Miss C would be proud of all of the young sisters who were elected last this past month. Ayanna Presley from Massachusetts, Juliana Hayes from Connecticut. She would be proud of your own here, Alexandra Cortez, Ocasio. She would be proud of so many who will be serving in the 116th Congress. So let me leave you with something Mrs. C said. She said that we all have the ability to serve because it is our rent that we pay. Please continue to serve. Step up, run for office, and be the change that you believe you can be in this great world. Thank you, Miss C. I know you're smiling on us, and I know you're ready for the next bit of good news, and that is one day, Mrs. C, we will put a woman in the White House. Thank you so much. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Donna. Now I am, in de I am delighted to introduce a powerhouse woman who works hard every day to help the women of New York City succeed. Please help me welcome the leader who has been the driving force behind She Built NYC, Deputy Mayor Alicia, Alicia Glenn. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wow, that's a really hard act to follow, Donna. Woo! That is not fair, but I will do the best I can. And thank you, Sherlyn, and thank you, Donna, for getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning to make it here. So Mrs. C is thankful for that, and keep drinking coffee. Um, let me say a couple of things. Um, it is obvious that discrimination exists. Women do not have the opportunities that men do, and women that do not conform to the system, who try to break with the accepted patterns, are stigmatized as odd and unfeminine. The fact is that a woman who aspires to be the chairman of the board or a member of the House does so for exactly the same reasons as any man. Basically, these are that she thinks she can do the job and she wants to try. I didn't say that. Those are my words. They're not from 2018, and they sh could be, though. They're from what Shirley Chisholm said, speaking in 1969 in a speech about the Equal Rights Amendment. Just think about that, in 1969. And as the first African-American woman elected to Congress, she never stopped fighting for equal representation, to fair access for education, for health care, for social services. But again, the 50 years on, the point she makes is still true. Sexism remains one of the most pervasive and enduring prejudices there is. And we can't shy away from that fact. And we see that, that long tail of inequality in the monuments across the city. There are about 90% of our statues and monuments are of men, right? And this is 2018. In Central Park alone, there are 23 statues, and only one is a woman, and it's a fake woman. It's Alice in Wonderland. That is not acceptable in our world. Because monuments aren't just decoration, right? They tell us who we are, where we've been, who we want to be. And right now, New York City's public realm tells a story that is almost exclusively male. And if you're a woman or a girl, and you don't see yourself, that's a problem. And that's a problem we're here to correct. And that's why back in June, the First Lady and I joined with women all across the city to launch She Built NYC. And we didn't just do it ourselves. We called on New Yorkers to come and tell us who were the women they wanted to celebrate. And we did this as part of Women NYC, a broader effort to make sure that women had the resources, the mentorship, the money, the programs, everything we need, but we also need the visuals. And we never realized just how much of a response we would get. We 
thought maybe a thousand people might submit. We got over two thousand, and you should really go on to women.nyc and look at the list of nominations. It's amazing. Please go home and look at that. And so, with the experts of all kinds of folks, historians, politicians, administrators, everybody, activists, I guess we now know who got picked. This amazing woman, and what a fashion icon. Check that coat out. That is amazing. Makes me wish I were dressed in the 60s and 70s. So let me say a few things that people wrote in the nominations. Virginia from Manhattan wrote, when I was a teenager in New York City in the 60s, she was a shining example to me of how a single woman can shatter a stultifying status quo. Ben from Queens said, all I gotta say is a true New York revolutionary. Diane from Brooklyn simply wrote, she's Shirley Chisholm, end of. Anyone who knew her would agree. She stands for fearlessness, intelligence, integrity, and today we're joined by so many women and friends and colleagues who are keeping that legacy alive. And I hope that those women who are going to Congress, all of those amazing women, and maybe even some of the men, will come to this very place and take a walk and think about what she did and continue to fight that battle. Because now we have a permanent place to do it, and that's incredibly important. So in 2019, we'll be coming back to announce who the actual artist is, which will hopefully be a woman. I'm pretty sure we'll get that right. And we will then, in 2020, have an actual statue right here at this beautiful entrance to Prospect Park. But you know what? We're not one and done. As I said, this is not just about one woman. We'll be back and we're going to choose the next She Built NYC monument, and we're going to keep rolling. We have a lot of work to get done. When we began this process, I said I wanted my daughters and my daughter's daughters and every kid to grow up in New York City that celebrates women rather than erases them. There's a reason why New York City has always been a place for dreamers, for artists, for innovators, for entrepreneurs. But you know what's been missing from that story? the women who also made this city great. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for the women who continue to not conform to the status quo. Thank you everybody so much. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Glenn. Now, as many of you know, the fierce Shirley Chisholm received her degree in sociology from Brooklyn College. And she was a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> so please join me in welcoming another Brooklyn College Delta sister to share some of Shirley's own words, Faith Bino. Good morning. My name is Faith Bino. <laughs> and as a citizen of Brooklyn, I am excited to be with you today on this momentous occasion because I idolized, as many of you did, Shirley Chisholm. She's a visionary pushing society to see beyond their norms and offering practical solutions to address the issues of her time. She didn't just talk about it, she handled her business and she took risks to, take the, to make the changes her constituents needed. The unbought, unbossed maverick declared her candidacy at a time when she knew her blackness and gender would be viewed as obstacles. She pushed beyond the idea of the singularity of identity. This was in direct contrast of her opponents, especially Richard Nixon, who in 1972 established a precedent of fear-mongering, stoking dog-whistle politics to take advantage of racial tensions, especially within the South. A native Brooklynite and an experienced politician, Congresswoman Chisholm understood that the multiplicities of our identities enriched the depths of this borough's diversity and, the, and who we were and how we lived was a reflection of what our country and the larger world is becoming. So when I, a first generation American, descendant of my proud Barbadian parents, member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and a constituent in the district that she served, saw Shirley Chisholm, I saw myself. I stand on the shoulders of Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, and in celebration will read to you an excerpt of the remarks she gave in her 1972 speech. 
I stand before you today as a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of the United States of America. I'm not the candidate of black America, although I'm black and proud. I'm not the candidate of the women's movement of this country, although I am a woman, and I'm proud of that. I'm not the candidate of any political bosses or fat cats or special interests. I stand here now without endorsements from any big name politicians or celebrities or any other kind of prop. I do not intend to offer to you the tired and glib cliches for which too long have been an accepted part of our political life. I am the candidate of the people of America. And my presence before you now symbolizes a new era in American political history. I have always earnestly believed in the great potential of America. Our constitutional democracy will soon celebrate its 200th anniversary. Effective testimony to the longevity to our cherished constitution and its unique bill of rights which continues to give the world an inspirational message of freedom and liberty. We Americans are a dynamic people. And I have faith in the American people. I believe that we are smart enough to correct our mistakes. I believe that we are intelligent enough to recognize the talent, energy, and dedication which all Americans, including women and minorities, have to offer. I know from my travels to the cities and small towns of America that we have a vast potential, which can and must be put to constructive use in getting this great nation together. I know that millions of Americans from all walks of life agree with me that leadership does not mean putting an ear to the ground to follow public opinion, but to have the vision of what is necessary and the courage to make it possible, building a strong and just society, rich in its diversity and is noble in its quality of life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Faith. It is now my pleasure to introduce the distinguished, a true man of the people, Congressman Ed Towns. Thank you very much. Um, let me say that this is a great, great day. I'll never forget that when uh, I was elected to Congress, and of course it was a reapportionment year, and uh, we went in to see uh, Tip O'Neill, who was the speaker at the time. And so he asked, he says, uh, who replaced Shirley Chisholm? I said, uh, I took the Shirley Chisholm seat. And Major Owen said, well, I took some of the district. He said, yeah, I understand, and she was so great it took two of you to replace her. Uh, Shirley was a very special lady. I mean, she would say things and do things, and she had a strange kind of philosophy. And I said this when I did a eulogy down in Palm Coast, Florida. Uh, Shirley said, if something is in your way, that means you're on your way. If you're not going any place, nothing will ever be in your way. That was Shirley Chisholm. But Shirley had something else, too. She had a way of bringing about coalitions. Shirley could work with folks that who disagree with her, even though she would tell them the fact that I resent the fact that you disagree with me, but I'm prepared to work with that little piece of you that really feel to be supportive of what we're about. <laughs> Shirley was interesting. And let me tell you that when I uh, arrived in the Congress, everybody was telling me about different things that Shirley did or Shirley said. And then, of course, uh, I said to them that you don't know what Shirley said to me that day she called me from Norman, Oklahoma, to tell me that she was not going to run again. And I said to her, Shirley, you know, uh, you, should, uh, you shouldn't run. Why would you want to quit now? And she says, but I want to support you. I said, well, that makes diff that's different. Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Shirley was that kind of person. Thank you so much. <laughs> Here, here. <laughs> and now it's my privilege to welcome another special New Yorker. 
He was a he for she way before the phrase was coined. And for many years, he fought alongside Shirley Chisholm to bring change to our city and country. Please join me in welcoming Representative Charlie Rangel. Thank you, First Lady. Yes. Thank you so much, First Lady, the Borough President, the mother of our distinguished Yvette Clark, all the public officials out here in Brooklyn, and I know Ed Towns recognizes that our congressional delegation is in Washington uh, dealing with a president that so many people have been critical of, but not me, because I think that President Trump has shattered the myth of white supremacy for, <laughs> for now and all times to come. And there's nobody that can say that in this country, nobody like him can be president of the United States. But, you know, coming from Harlem and only knowing Harlem for so long, I have to admit, uh, President Adams, that I, I didn't know too much about Brooklyn. I, I knew a hell of a lot about the Dodgers, but <laughs> Brooklyn wasn't the kind of place that I was raised to have it on my mind too long. But when I got to the New York State Assembly and saw this Shirley Chisholm, you can bet your sweet life everybody wanted to know where the heck did she come from. <laughs> Shirley Chisholm really not only put Brooklyn's political future on the block, but everything that she got involved in, she helped make it better. And I remember when she was working there with Percy Sutton and other state legislators in the early 60s, and they had the vision to bring together the black legislators there in order to unify their effort. And even though during some of those meetings, Shirley was talking about running for Congress, we only knew in Harlem one congressman for the whole country that was black, and that was the late and great Adam Clayton Powell. So listening to Shirley talk about it, we would nod, we would be courteous, and some people say, where's Brooklyn again? But I tell you one thing, when she came out to run, Everybody stopped to listen because it wasn't just a black woman from Brooklyn. It was someone that believed in our great constitution, that believed in the words that was in it, and was willing to say, if you can stand up and say that you're an American and you're qualified, that you should not be shy to speak out and to be unbossed and unbought. And Shirley brought this type of feeling to the United States Congress. And as they said, when they put her on the Agriculture Committee, claiming that there was one tree in Brooklyn and she was, she was representing that, she met with Senator Dole from Kansas and built the, 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 the food stamp program out of the Agricultural Committee, which today so many people have been dependent on it. I had the privilege of traveling on the train and plane from Albany when we were together in the assembly and certainly in the Congress uh, when we served together on the floor. And I had the opportunity to see how her presence would just sparkle the attention of people in airports and in, in train stations and especially little children. And I learned so much for a person that had an international and national reputation, the time that you would have to stoop down to talk to a child, to inspire them to know that in this country that anyone has the right to do it. So we have so many people, whether it's David Dinkins, whether it was Percy Sutton, whether it was Jesse Jackson, whether it was President Obama, that never had to explain that they were colored and they were prepared. Shirley Chisholm chatted the, the idea that she could be held back and so many people were able to walk in that track. And today, we have a better America because they made challenges on a lot of things, but not being able to say that being a woman and being a woman of color does not qualify you for any position this great country has. Thank you for inviting me to Brooklyn. 
And the only thing I'm missing today is Bill Howard. So, Bill, I'm down here. I know you wouldn't let me not be down here. But, Bill, I've never, never been to anything where we can all say and thank Shirley Chisholm that Bill Howard hadn't been there to open the door for me. Thank you so much, First Lady. Yeah. We miss Bill Howard. He would have been so, so, so very proud to be here today. Um, thank you, Charlie. I want to introduce my friend and uh, great leader, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. I want to officially make it clear that I'm part of the Men Who Gets It Club. And I think every, every so often, and I really want to thank the First Lady and the entire team that is moving forward with this crucial concept of understanding how important it is to have those symbols of inclusion of all different groups, ethnicities, and gender. And I believe that from time to time, uh, someone lives through a period of time that they transform any one particular identity and they become a symbol. Uh, we need to become Chisholm-like. And so when young people walk through this park of any ethnicity, particularly here in the borough of Brooklyn, with 47 percent of the people of this borough speak a language other than English at home, young Asian children should be Chisholm-like and know the possibilities that lies before them in this country. Young girls who wear hijabs and walk through here and they're denied and treated unfairly should be Chisholm-like and know the possibilities that lie in front of them. L young African-American and Portuguese and German and French, all the various groups and ethnicities that make up this mighty borough we call Brooklyn, Congressman Wrangell learned today we are considered the center of the universe and Manhattan is just in our orbit, but we control this flow. But we're Chisholm-like. Men of all groups, women of all groups, this magnificent person 50 years ago sent a strong message that a change is going to come. And it doesn't matter who occupies the White House. There's going to be some black folks in our house. And there's going to be all groups that's going to participate in this place called America. Because of... Shirley Chisholm. What she did about the food stamp program, the creativity of using the committee that they thought they were going to lock her out, and she used it in a manner to not only do what was important for her particular period of time, but what was important for times that we continue today. This is a mighty day for us all. This statue is representative of who we are as a people, who we are as a country, who we are as a nation. I'm glad to be here in the borough of Brooklyn that she called home. And no matter where you go, Assemblywoman Robinson would tell you, Congressman, there's only two types of people in America, those who live in Brooklyn and those who wish they could. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. I, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. <laughs> uh, and now I'd like to introduce... Um, uh, another dynamic leader, and we thank her for hosting us in her district, Lori Kumbo. Woo! <laughs> Good morning, Brooklyn! Good morning! Let's make some noise today! This isn't a funeral or a vigil, this is a celebration. And I am so excited and enthusiastic to be here. We go to so many press conferences, we go to so many rallies, but walking up here today and knowing that this is the place where so many people are going to come for inspiration and are going to be inspired is incredible. I mean, for me, when I heard about this 
conversation that turned into a movement by our First Lady Shalane McRae, as well as our Commissioner uh, and Deputy Mayor Alicia Glenn. I was so happy about this. And we started this process of making sure that this dynamic of women are represented all throughout New York City. There are only five sculptures of women in New York City, and those five are in Manhattan. We wanted to make sure when the discussions were had, there was talk that it would be in Manhattan. I said, no. It absolutely cannot be in Manhattan. It absolutely has to be in Brooklyn because this is a Brooklyn story of inspiration. Shirley Chisholm is Brooklyn, and she is the most pivotal figure in our political history, not only in Brooklyn, not only in this state, but in this country. She has inspired dozens, thousands of women to run for office and to hold that power. And I'm so happy to have Donna Brazil here, who came here from 3 o'clock in the morning just to get here. But I also have a story of how I got here this morning. I had to wake up really early. I had to get my 15-month-old dress. I had to make him breakfast. I had to make myself breakfast. I had to get dressed. I had to try to look like Shirley Chisholm today. I had to check my emails and my text messages. I had to make sure that I did all of that took him to daycare to make sure that he was at school, got there a little late, copped a story about why he was late, and now I'm here. And so for all the dynamic women who got up and did all of that today, I celebrate you! <laughs> because it is so challenging to be a woman. It is an honor to certainly be here today. And I want to say, as was said, there are so many women, more than ever, that are now claiming their rightful place in the House and the Senate, a record number. The first Native Americans, the first Latinas out of Texas. We have the first everything. We have the youngest Congress members that have ever come into this particular position, and we are proud. But Brooklyn has its own first that I'm so proud of here. We have in Brooklyn, New York, the these particular African-American women are the first to ever hold their positions. We have Assemblymember Latrice Walker. We have Assemblymember Ranice Bichat. Assemblymember Diana Richardson. Senator Roxanne Persault. We have Senator Velmanette Montgomery. We have Assemblymember Annette Robinson. And we have our dynamic judges, the most African-American judges ever elected anywhere in the country are from Brooklyn, New York. And here in the city council, my predecessor, Mary Pinkett, was the first African-American woman to ever hold the position of city council. It is because of them that we are. And Dr. Una Clark, Dr. Una Clark, give it up for Dr. Una Clark. The first immigrant to ever hold a city council position. But you would not believe that she is an immigrant when you read her bio because it seems that she has lived here for four lifetimes. She has accomplished so very much. And I also want to recognize, for me growing up, seeing our deputy borough president, Jeanette Gatson, with so much power and so much conviction, gave me the inspiration that I could do so much that I am doing today. And I also want to acknowledge that for all of the women that I have named, particularly the younger generation coming up, our living Shirley Chisholm is our Congress member, Yvette Clark. She is in Washington, D.C. today, but she is literally responsible for electing so many dynamic and powerful women to hold office. And I want to recognize our new Attorney General, Letitia James who made history, herstory, by making sure that we have a new paradigm shift, that our dreams can be so much bigger and that we can accomplish so much more. And I want to recognize Andrea Stewart Cousin, our new majority leader for the New York State Senate. And we are all here holding these powerful positions because of Shirley Chisholm. And to just close, when we think about her leadership, when we think about a Barack Obama and a Hillary Clinton, she inspired those movements for us to know that leadership is not a white man. A leadership is anyone who is qualified, who has the convictions, and is going to do the work on behalf of the people. And in 1972, when she ran for president,
This was following the assassinations of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and so many of our great leaders. In 1972, she ran for president, the first African-American woman to run for president. She came in fourth place out of 13 candidates, all white males, with two assassination attempts on her life. Now that's a leadership that we have not seen or known in a very long time. Someone that's willing to risk their lives for the betterment of people and to change this world. This is a remarkable woman. And I know that we are going to have another president from Brooklyn, New York, that is going to rise to the occasion to be the next leader. I'm not claiming me. <laughs> Wouldn't be bad though. But there are so many dynamic women who are going to continue to ascend to these halls of leadership. And it's gonna come right here from Brooklyn, New York, when people come here to see our legacy and how we've changed the world in Brooklyn. Thank you so much. This is awesome. I can't wait to be here. Bill Howard, we love you. We miss you. This wouldn't be here without you. We love you, Bill Howard. Thank you. Well, you know, we're gonna need, uh, a lot more statues. <laughs> I, I see them. I see the list. <laughs> I'd now like to welcome Assemblywoman Joanne Simon. Yes, Joanne! Thank you, First Lady. And uh, thank you, Lori Cumbo, for setting a standard that none of us can reach uh, in your speech. So I am just delighted to be here. I did not know Shirley Chisholm when I was a ch young person, but I do remember her. I was in high school, and I just remember knowing about Shirley Chisholm. It doesn't seem to me to be a time when I didn't know about Shirley Chisholm, which says something about Shirley Chisholm, that she really had the presence and the reach that she reached everybody everywhere. I grew up in Yonkers. I went to high school in the Bronx. I had never been to Brooklyn. Brooklyn meant nothing to me. But Shirley Chisholm meant something to me. And I couldn't be, I don't think it, you could have had a better choice to build the first statue to a woman here in New York City than to honor Shirley Chisholm who is such an incredible presence and an incredible woman who recognized early on, yes, we have barriers. This barrier of gender is so tremendous. It just is, and we see it every day, and we're seeing it more and more, and thank God people are stepping up and saying, wait a second, this barrier of gender is real, and we are going to make sure that it falls. So thank you, Shirley Chisholm. We are so indebted to you, and thank you to everybody who had a role in making this happen today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Joanne. And now I'd like to welcome, where is she? Hey, Assembly Member Rodney's Vichot. Thank you so much. Um, I see uh, Congressman Charlie Rangel is leaving. He's, he was mentioning that he wants to move here to Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a little bit more affordable here. <laughs> um, um, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to first thank uh, First Lady Shirlane McRae and Deputy Mayor Alicia Glenn for inviting me for this wonderful, wonderful announcement. I want to acknowledge all the commissioners here, the Deputy Mayors. Uh, Deputy Mayor Phil Thompson is here. I uh, was really happy to see Donna Brazil, uh, our congressmen, uh, all our colleagues in government. I have my very own Senator Kevin Parker, who's here looking great, uh, from, my <laughs> from the same district that he represents. Um, <laughs> Um, of course, Mommy Dr. Una Clark, let's give it up to her. I do, I do want to recognize my club, Shirley Chisholm Democratic Club, who's here, yes. And certainly uh, the Shirley Chisholm uh, Children Institute, which was founded by our late Bill Howard and Barbara Bullitt is here um, in his place. We, we, we always will remember Bill Howard, yes. 
Um, I make this quick. I was really happy to be part of this initiative, the Women um, New York City of the She Built Initiative, taking upon themselves to celebrate the female icons and trailblazers whose contributions have been proven and invaluable of our city. As a woman in politics, um, I am also aware of the pressures that are faced when women choose any career path, especially one that is male dominated. Um, today, as we honor a Shirley Anita Chisholm, who was the first black woman to be elected to in Congress in 1968, which was 50 years ago, and she was the first to run for president in 1972, we celebrate her steadfast in her campaign efforts, who did not let institutionalized marginalization sway her or intimidate her. And that's why many black women are elected. She was, a catalyst for, she was a catalyst for change in her legislation for all people in education, social services, immigrants, and all human rights. She left behind a legacy and a blueprint that shows women, like myself, with perseverance, anything can happen. Today is a great day. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Shirley Chisholm. I am extremely excited because, um, you know, as a legislator, as a woman, as a black person, as a, as a child of immigrants' parents from the Caribbean, from Haiti, and as a member of the illustrious sorority, Delta Sigma Theta sorority, and they're here in the house. Yeah. It is, and as a Brooklynite, I am just elated to have this monument as a historical figure so that our children, our residents, can learn of her fire, unbought, unbossed, persistent for change. So let Shirley Chisholm's spirit and legacy continue to lead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Assemblymember Bichotte. I just want to draw your attention to the young people who are standing behind me. I know they're cold and, and we're not gonna go on much longer, but thank you so much for being out here today. We really appreciate you. And now um, when to hear, we're gonna hear from Council Member Helen Rosenthal. Yes, Helen! <laughs> Come with me short. So good morning, I'm Helen Rosenthal, Chair of the City Council's Committee on Women. There are women in every single one of the five boroughs, so I have no preferences. I'm delighted and humbled to be here in Brooklyn with you today as we honor Shirley Chisholm. It's very meaningful, obviously, that Shirley Chisholm is the first woman to be recognized through the She Built NYC initiative. She paved the way for women and people of color across our country as evidenced here and as evidenced by everyone who's been talked about over the last uh, 50 years. Um, I was 12 years old when she ran for president, so like so many here, she meant the world to me. I think, thank goodness for her, we all stand on her shoulders and we all owe her a huge debt of gratitude. Um, I just want to mention that Shirley Chisholm not only courageously broke down barriers, but she was also courageous in the stances that she took as an elected official. Shirley Chisholm was a vocal opponent of the Vietnam War and the military draft. She supported spending increases for education, health care, and other social services. And she called for reductions in military spending, something that we're all doing today, except for one person. Um, Shirley Chisholm fought for economic justice for low-income women. She played a critical role in the creation, as was mentioned, of the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, WIC. And she wrote legislation giving domestic workers the right to a minimum wage. So thank you, Shirley Chisholm, for courageously leading the way for us. And thank you, First Lady McRae and Deputy Mayor Glenn, for making sure that Shirley Chisholm is the first woman to be honored through She Built NYC. I'm looking forward to recognizing more and more of the great women who built our city. It is long overdue. Yeah. 
Thank you, Helen. And now we will hear from Council Member Matthew Eugene. Yes, Matthew Eugene. Thank you. Thank you, uh, First Lady. Thank you very much. I didn't expect to speak because I said to myself, this is a woman affair. <laughs> but what I can say that because it is a woman affair, it is our affair. Yes. That's right. Because the women, they are, are mothers or sisters or wife or daughters. And then when they succeed, we succeed also. You know, when they used to ask me, where you come from? I used to say that, you know, I will present Brooklyn, a city called, a district in Brooklyn. But now, after listening the people who are talking about Charlie teasing, to make sure I got some, some credit and some pride, I will say that I am in the district of the Bow of Charlie teasing. And let me tell you one thing. When we think about charities and we see what's going on right now, our quality of life, we can say that really, Charlie sees him. She was exactly the inspiration, not only for the woman, but for all of us. Myself, Matthew Eugene, coming from a beautiful island, I stand on the shoulders of charities in also. That's right. And I want to let you know that today I feel empowered. That's right. And I learned a great lesson of history and also a great lesson of politics. Just think a moment what she did, what she realized at that time mm -hmm. when she was living. It was not easy for her. Just think about the challenges she went to go through. And now, I say to myself, Matthew Eugene, you got to shape up. <laughs> you got to shape up. If you want to say that you, you represent a district in the bow of charitism, you got to follow a step. Right. It's going to be difficult, but I guarantee you, today, I learned so much. And I feel empowered. I feel the power. And I'm going to work hard to make sure I deserve to be in the district where Charlie Teasing was the first, I believe, right? Yeah. Council member. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you so much, Council member. Uh, now we will hear from State Senator Kevin Parker. <laughs> Been objectified. <laughs> Good morning. I'm State Senator Kevin Parker. I represent the 21st District in Brooklyn, which is Flatbush and East Flatbush, Midwood, Dittmas Park, Windsor Terrace, and Park Slope. You are standing right in my district. Um, I'm the Democratic Whip in the New York State Senate, as well as the ranking member on the Energy and Telecommunications Committee. And I really could not be prouder uh, to represent this district than I am right now to know that this project is coming here. I want to thank uh, First Lady Jelaine McRae um, and uh, Commissioner Alicia Glenn, as well as Deputy Mayor Phil Thompson, um, for all of their important work. Um, of course, Council Member Rosenthal and, and all those folks who have been engaged in this project. Um, like Matthew Eugene, I didn't come with the expectation of you know giving a big speech, but Una Clark, who I used to work for in the city council when she was first elected, taught me that every good politician has a speech one of three places, in his head, in his heart, or in his briefcase. Um, but unfortunately, on my way here, I dropped my speech somewhere. But I'm glad that, that Council Member Lori Cumbo found it and read it word for word. I want to thank you, Council Member, um, for delivering those, those, uh, those, uh, those, important, those important words. I have the, the, the unfortunate task of being in a place where Everything has been said, but everybody just hasn't said it yet. And apparently I'm the, 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 the only thing stopping you and hot cocoa. So I'm going to keep it really, really quick. Born and bred in Brooklyn, um, my story about Shirley Chisholm is very personal. Uh, my mother, Georgia Elizabeth Parker, um, both worked and went to school at Brooklyn College and was a classmate of Shirley Chisholm. And went to high school at Girls High with Mary Pinkett. 
And so these were names and people that, as a young person, I knew um, had no idea at the time that it was going to mean so much to me in my life to, to have grown up at, 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 at the feet of these great women. Um, but it has made all the world of, of difference. And it was um, those world models that led me to, to, to the great Dr. Una Clark and her leadership and her mentorship of me. And so I look at this uh, as, a, as a great opportunity um, not just for, for women who I think are going to be amazingly inspired, but also um, for young boys who, be, who will become men who will understand um, the importance of women in, their, in, in, their, in, in our society. And so I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you've done. I want us to continue to um, work to make this, this city uh, the city that we want to raise our children in and to make sure that it reflects the diversity that's obviously um, all around us. And, and so, again, um, great work and look forward to, to the next monument that we put in Brooklyn. Thank you so much, Kevin Parker. Um, as I look around, I see all of you out here in the cold, so many of you, but so, your faces are glowing uh, because this is a great day. We have so much to celebrate. I want to uh, thank Dr. Una Clark and Charlie Rangel and Assemblymember, uh, the Congressman Ed Towns, and I, don't, I, don't, I can't do the whole list, but um, the fact that so many dignitaries came out here today um, to, to celebrate Shirley Chisholm's birthday and, and the launch, the, the, uh, the coming of this great statue means so much to, to me. It means so much to Brooklyn, to New York City, and, and, and really to our country because uh, it's been a long time coming, yep. right? And I do hope that there will be many, many more. But uh, nothing will be like this one. So let's cherish this moment. Let's all give a big shout out to Shirley Chisholm. Let's say, all say happy birthday. Happy birthday, Shirley Chisholm. I want to thank, again, all the New Yorkers who took part in this process, as well as our distinguished panel of experts and the Department of Cultural Affairs. And we all, we all honor Shirley Chisholm in our, in, our old way, in our own way, but we all got to keep fighting. Keep fighting for equal representation and for all the change that, that needs to happen going forward. So thank you all for being here again. Uh, we appreciate we appreciate everything that you've done to make this day happen.